Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a last property that is a convolution property of a discrete time Fourier transform. First of all, what do you mean by convolution? Convolution means, so when two functions convolve with each other, then what will be the effect of this convolution but in discrete time Fourier transform? We will see this but in statement. So first of all, if x1 of n discrete time Fourier transform is x1 of w and x2 of n discrete time Fourier transform is x2 of w but the convolution of two sequence that is x1 of n convolve with x2 of n the convolution of two samples or two sequence in discrete time Fourier domain is a product of DTFT of two sequence but separately which means we are going to find out a DTFT of two functions separately and then we will multiply both the results but we are going to prove this statement so let's see what is the procedure to prove this statement first of all we will write the definition of convolution So this is the definition of a convolution. Now we will write the definition of DTFT. Now here I am going to consider my x of n input is x1 of n convolved with x2 of n. So, of course, this x of n is also replaced by the same one. Now, here I am going to substitute the definition of convolution that is this whole equation I am going to place over here. Now, what I am going to do, I am going to take this summation that is k value varies from minus infinity to infinity and x1 of k outside the bracket and I will take this summation value that is n value varies from minus infinity to infinity and this a to the power minus j omega n inside this bracket. Now, here we cannot apply directly a definition of discrete time Fourier transform. Reason is here the n is delayed by k. So, I am going to use some substitution method. So, let us say this n minus k is replaced by m. That m is my variable. Here n is also variable but this k is the constant but only for this bracket. Now, I am going to substitute n minus k equals to m. So, if I shift this minus k on right hand side, we can write m plus k. And I will substitute all these two values but in second part of summation. Here in second bracket I have replaced my all n by m plus k. Here the n minus k is replaced by m and here n is replaced by m plus k. So after adding a minus k on left hand side plus k minus k will get cancelled. So we have only m on left hand side. But look at here on right hand side. If we add minus k in lower limit then minus infinity minus k remains minus infinity. The result is minus infinity. Similarly if we add minus k in upper limit then infinity minus k result is always infinite. Now if we add minus k in my lower limit that is in minus infinity then minus infinity minus k is always a minus infinity. Similarly we will add minus k in upper limit that is infinity minus k result is infinity. Now we will have only x2 of m 
as a function and look at it now i'm going to multiply minus j omega inside this bracket now this whole summation it depends on value m so x2 of m is function which can be place inside the summation but here e to the power minus j omega k is the constant so i will split the orders of exponential term and i will take e to the power minus j omega k outside this summation Now I can take e to the power minus j omega k outside this bracket because this minus j omega k that is this whole term is the constant term. So, I have taken e to the power minus jk outside the summation bracket. So, this e to the power minus jk I am going to place in first bracket. Now, look at here. In both these bracket, both the bracket satisfies the definition of discrete time Fourier transform. Basically, here we have a variable k. The summation value is depends on value k and it varies from minus infinity infinity x1 of k e to the power minus j omega k. And in second bracket, we have variable m and summation value varies from m varies from minus infinity infinity x2 of m e to the power minus j omega n basically in our standard definition we use n as a variable so the definition of dtft is summation value n value varies from minus infinity infinity x1 of k or you can say simply x of n e to the power minus j omega n in both this part we have a k and m as a variable so we can directly represent these both the brackets in x of omega format so we can write so we can write dtft of x1 of n convolution with x2 of n is represented by this is nothing but the definition of dtft so we can directly write x1 of omega and this one is also satisfied the definition of dtft so we'll write x2 of omega and this is nothing but the proof of a convolution theorem so thank you for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda and subscribe to ikeda for further more videos thank you so much